One of the best features of modern Microsoft Surface devices is that they're upgradable, which wasn't the case in the past. Now the Surface Laptop 4, Laptop Studio, the Pro 8 and Pro X, and the Surface Laptop Go are all upgradable as far as the SSD goes. None can upgrade the RAM, but at least Microsoft gives us something. I already released a video where I upgraded the Surface Laptop Go, which you can find here. But today I'm going to upgrade all of the other surfaces that I currently have, the three that you see on the table before me. Soon I'd love to get the Surface Laptop Studio and upgrade that as well, but that will have to come in the future. For now, let's just go through the process of upgrading these. The first step you're going to take when you're upgrading any surface is probably a good idea to back up any critical files that you have saved locally on your machine, just in case something goes horribly wrong. I typically keep most of my important files in the cloud or saved on an external hard drive, so I don't have an issue, but keep that in mind. Then you're going to go to Google and you're going to search Microsoft Surface, Surface Image, and it's going to give you the option to download a recovery image for your Microsoft Surface. This will store things like the, net, the base drivers and anything that you need to get your Surface started once you have a new SSD in there. Technically, you can upgrade your SSD without doing this first, but it's just gonna make the setup process a little bit more of a frustration because you might not have had access to your keyboard or your trackpad. If you need your serial number, you can find it on the bottom of the Surface Laptop or underneath the kickstand on Surface Pro. Or you can also find it in your settings by going to About. You'll see the image is quite large, so be sure to give your laptop some time to be able to do it. While that happens, we're going to move to both the Surface Pro X and the Surface Pro 8. The process of upgrading with these two devices is quite easy, and really all you need is a Phillips head screwdriver, which I'll show down in the description, and a SIM card removal tool that you might find in your iPhone or Android box. Be sure to shut down your device completely before doing anything, just to keep it safe. Then you're going to flip it over, use our SIM card removal tool, press down, lift up, Set that aside, switch to our Torx T3 screwdriver, unscrew it, take out the screw, pop out the SSD, be very careful here. Take off the tray. Remove the SSD, place the new SSD Close the tray In case you're wondering, the black should be on the outside of the frame The silver should be on the inside of the frame Slide that back in Put our screw back down Close the lid by sliding it in, pushing it down. Open our surface up, connect it to power, and it's back. One down, two to go. The other thing you're going to look up is the Microsoft Surface Upgrade Guide. Scroll past these great videos and then move on to SSD removal and compatible surface devices. Now notably this is a guide for enterprise, so it's meant for IT professionals, but you'll see, at least with the Surface Pros, this isn't difficult work. This guide can also be followed if you'd prefer not listening to me. If you scroll down to remove and replace SSD, there's a link to SSD removal guide for enterprise. You're gonna hit download in your language, and you'll see that there are guides for the Surface Pro 7 Plus, but those should apply to the Surface Pro 8 as well. There shouldn't be any difference here. So I'm gonna download that guide and I'm also gonna download the Surface Laptop and Laptop 3 and Laptop 4 service guide. Might as well also download the Surface Pro X service guide even though I know how to upgrade that SSD. Okay, now we're gonna go to our Surface Pro 7 Plus guide. Here's a procedure to swap SSD to a new device process, whatever that means. And this guide will, and this guide will be, and this guide will be relatively straightforward, but if you want the official guide, then you should go to this. I'll link it down in the description. The SSD comes in a small container that's used as heat sink. But as I've done before, it's relatively easy to just use your fingernails or something, some pick in order to get underneath 
and lift it out of its container. You can see they use thermal paste in order, you can see they use thermal paste on the SSD in order to get some heat dissipation, because these things can get pretty hot. But there's not a lot of aluminum here to really dissipate the heat. I'll leave an example of thermal paste in the description as well if you do want to do this yourself, or you should find your th favorite thermal paste on Amazon. But any thermal paste should work here. Now you're going to want to take your new SSD and drop it into the little container. Close the container up. There we go. When you turn on the device again, it might just prompt you with the BIOS because it doesn't recognize the operating system, of which there is none on here. If you want to pre-install an operating system on the SSD, that might speed up the process a little bit, but I typically don't. Instead, I'll use an external thumb drive with Windows 10 or Windows 11 pre-installed on it and install from there. It's telling us here that I can't find a bootable operating system. We know that's the case, so we could just easily plug in a thumb drive with Windows 10 pre-installed and drop it on here. Now let's move on to the Surface Pro X, which is going to be the exact same process. The SSD is on this side this time. I'm going to use the SIM tool, press down, it pops out. There's our SSD. We can switch to our Torx T3. Unscrew the screw. Going to use my thumbnail to open up the tray. Be relatively gentle, but this tray is a little bit malleable, so it's okay if it bends a little bit. Drop in our new SSD. Add thermal paste if you want, which is a good idea if you want to keep your SSD cool. Recommendation down in the description. Well, it looks like 256 gigs. It's actually a terabyte. We're tricking it. We slide that in. Use our Torx T3 head to screw back in the screw. Close up the tray. Plug our surface into power. And there it is. Two down, one to go. All right, now for the fun one, the Surface Laptop 4. First, make sure to shut down the laptop. Once it's shut down, you can go ahead and flip it on its back. Again, I'm following the guide on Microsoft's website, so be sure to read that before you go and do this yourself. I'm gonna leave, use a little plastic spudger tool to get up underneath the feet. All right, so these feet have different properties. So the front foot has a small little gap in the very, very big and very, very entrance where you can get underneath it. Whereas the rear foot has it at the back of the laptop. They say to use a spudger tool, a plastic spudger tool like this, but frankly, I don't have a good spudger tool, so I can try. Yeah, okay, that works. That actually works very well. Well, better than the alternative. So managed to not destroy this one. I destroyed the front one, unfortunately. It still works, but it just looks a little bit beat up. Then let's try the back. This is still a better solution than the strips of the Surface Laptop Go that I had to deal with, which was my biggest nightmare. Yeah, my spudger tool is not made for this. That wasn't as hard as I expected it to be. I might need to get some more feet if I can find them. I'll let you guys know down in the description in case you guys do the same thing, but very important that you have a static wrist strap or in my case, static anklet strap in order to avoid any sort of uh, elect static electricity causing damage to your internals. So I'm going to go ahead and put this on. You're gonna connect the other end to a ground. So I have my desktop power supply here, which is plugged in, which will do just fine. I'm gonna go to the C-Cover fabric keyboard type. Okay, so I'm on the fabric portion of this guy. There's both a fabric portion and a metal portion, which will just take a slightly different steps. I'm going to use a T5 screw to remove the screws from all four corners. Looks like the adhesive 
Let's see if it's stopping me. It appears like the screws in the front and the back are the same, but just for safety, you should always keep your screws organized such that you know which goes where. So now the description says specifically, we're going to use a suction cup on both the top and the bottom device to open up the device. I don't know how I'm going to get a su suction cup to work on fabric, frankly. Oh, okay. Yeah. Slide it along there. The thinner the plastic pry tool, the better. Slide it along there. Just gently, don't break anything in order to get a little bit of purchase between the two sides. Once the seat cover separation from the device bottom case is achieved, place a finger between the seat cover and device region. Pull upwards slightly to separate the seat cover from the magnets. Oh, it's magnetic. Oh my god. It's magnetic. That is... That is the coolest thing that I've ever seen. Oh my... Oh my god. It's not clips. Gently. Gently lift it off and you can see the cable in order to connect the keyboard is very It's magnets. Oh my gosh. I am This is the best designed device ever <laughs> Once angled keep the C cover while pulling C cover directly towards yourself. Okay, so just pull it slightly towards you I don't think that's really necessary frankly Don't press the power button Okay, while hovering the seat cover, disconnect the FPC from the main board with your other hand. Okay. Careful. FPC is easily disconnected by pulling up. Okay. Okay. So, right here, the FPC sits right in there. You can very gently just slide a fingernail underneath it, or you could use a clip or something in order to get underneath it and pop it upwards. It comes directly upwards. It's very, very smooth. And there are the internals. Oh my God, this is beautiful. This, like look at how thin these batteries are. This is, I don't know which I like prefer more, the MacBook or this, but this is incredibly thin and incredibly beautiful. The fact that they can fit everything in this tiny little form factor, I'm even more amazed than I was before. It is recommended to use an ESD safe battery cover appropriate for the size across to protect the battery from any accidental damage. So if you have an ESD safe battery cover, you just cover this while you're working in here. I don't. Interestingly enough, I'm not seeing a recommendation to unplug the battery. I'm not sure where you would. Probably here somewhere. But let's just go ahead and remove the SSD. Take that off. Take out the SSD. Just as before, there's thermal paste. Reapply the thermal paste if you want it. Here's the new one terabyte SSD. You slot it in there. You, this is where you'd clean it up, clean up this, apply thermal paste to either side, and you're going to apply the black cover around and on top of the silver piece. Should be all bundled up. It says 256, but we know that's not the case. You're gonna slot it in, and take the T5 screw, screw it back down, make sure it's all the way in, Take the keyboard, slide it gently towards the top, 
gonna take this, put it into place. Careful, because it's very magnetic and it's going to jump around a lot. Gently, gently, gently click it into place. Don't put on too much pressure. Doesn't need much pressure at all. Then you're going to slide the keyboard into place. Let it down slowly. Okay. okay. Oh, it's a lot easier than you'd think. Of course, at this point, you can actually screw in the screws again, but before I do so, I'm going to plug it in first to make sure it's still working. Come on. And there you go. So in case you're wondering, that is how you upgrade the SSD in the Surface Laptop 4 which was so much more simple than my experience with the Surface Laptop Go. Use a T5 Torx screwdriver to screw back in the screws and you are done. Now it seems that the feet do snap into place. This one is sadly super beat up, but that's my fault. Oh, there we go. Just make sure you put it in the right way. Obviously, they don't have the adhesive anymore, so they might not stay in place, but I might try and find some replacements. That's how you upgrade the Surface Laptop 4, the Surface Pro X, and the Surface Pro 8. I'd like to thank iFixit for providing this toolkit for me that I use today. I'll leave a link in the description to it, as, long as, as well as any other tools and a replacement SSD that you could use for this process. It was a relatively easy process, especially for the pro devices. For those of you who have never replaced an SSD before, this is your opportunity to actually get into it if you want to. Even the Surface Laptop 4's process was not that difficult considering compared to many other processes that I've had before. The magnetic connection between the bottom panel and the cover was just so mind-blowing and so incredible. So thank you for watching. I hope you liked this video. Let me know down in the comments what you think of it. Be sure to subscribe if you're interested in watching more content just like this, and I will catch you in the next one. See ya.